So the question is, what kind of content should you take in when you're not at jujitsu class? Let's talk about it, guys. My name is Bill Jones, head instructor of Top Level Martial Arts in beautiful downtown Cuyahoga Falls. Thank you for watching. You're watching Professor's Corner. I'm a black belt under master Pedro Sauer and Tony Rinaldi. And with me today is Kendall. Kendall Hi. Gage. Kendall is also a black belt. So one step removed. Therefore, like our authority down. is much higher, right? We yeah. Are, we are. No, yeah. I'm just kidding. No. Yeah. We're just guys. My who, video watching skills have far yeah. exceeded. <laughs> yeah, actually, I was going to say, it, yeah. more than the black belt, the the, yes. the the amount of content you've taken in. Right. Yeah. All right. So this is a kind of a, there's a lot to go go through in this particular question, don't you think? There's, sure. Because I think, uh, especially in, to sound old, today's age, you think, well, what content should I take in? It's automatically like. What videos should I watch? Right. But, uh, I mean, I can go into it. I have, a, and I think you do too, like just a library of jujitsu and martial arts related like books too. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but anyway, let, let's start it off. I mean, like uh, you all, we talk about this. I pick, I picked Kendall specifically for this video because I know that you have like a lot of thoughts on the types of content that are out there and right. like how they differ. Like, like you might get a Lachlan Giles video on leg locks and you might buy a Craig right. Jones video on leg locks and they yeah. may have the same leg locks in them, but they are not right. the They're same not video. They're not talk the same way. How is that? What, what do you mean? Well, uh, Lachlan specifically, at least on BJJ Fanatics, right? I think things might be different on his subnet platform, but I haven't dove into that yet. Uh, a lot of his are anthologies. They're meant to be used like an encyclopedia and you're never going to sit down with your encyclopedia and be like, oh, I'm learning a lot today. I mean, it might be fun, but... That's just a very hard way to absorb information, right? That's yeah. If you were going to say what's the opposite of the way we teach it in class, the no context, just a move at a time situation would not be the way to go, right? Yeah, a, a good example of that from like, uh, you know, I, I guess the real world, if you yeah. will, is uh, when I first started getting into like biology and anatomy, physiology, things right. like that, I bought a copy of Gray's Anatomy, right? which is, a, for anybody who doesn't know, it's it's the medical dictionary right. of, of and encyclopedia yeah, not for, the tv show right yeah right. not 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 the one with ellen pompeo but yeah. but it's a book about yay thick and i and i remember talking to a doctor and i was like i can't wait to dig into it and he he just kind of looked at me funny and like as i started reading it i realized oh this is not a book to right. read this yes. is like this is i want to know material. what muscles are, are yeah. you know make up the the shoulder go reference the shoulder right. now you can see a diagram all of all of that it. said as reference material, I really like all this stuff. Uh, some of his older stuff is taught more in a, like, these are the moves, this is the order you should learn them in kind of format. And I tend to prefer that, because the way I personally absorb long-form DVDs is I put everything at two times speed, or if it's a different one that I can put faster, I do faster. And I'll watch it beginning to end, taking notes on what interests me, and then come back and watch those sometimes at normal speed, sometimes at the speed they're at. If it's something like a throw and the timing is going to be kind of specific, then I kind of have to watch it normal. Uh, but if it's like an arm bar or something, it won't matter. It's kind of funny because I do the same thing. Right. Like I'll even like, uh, like John Donaher is a good one to do this with because right. his stuff, uh, again, all of it's really good. Like yeah. if, if chances are, if you have a high level practitioner and they know how to teach, right. then, then the, the content is going to okay. be great. It's just yeah. kind of how, how, how is it structured? Right. And like, I like John Donaher's stuff, but like I can put his stuff on in the car. Right. And listen to it like a podcast most yeah. of the time. Because usually his has like three minutes of actually demonstrating a move with a 20-minute preface about the move. Right. And like all the yeah. things. And like I'll, I'll, I'll do that with a lot of them. And again, like I'm, I'm the same way, like 1.5 to 2 times speed. Because for me at that point, it's not even about learning the move. It's about seeing what moves are in there. Because right. as you get better and better, you just hap happen to know a lot right. more stuff. And, and it's like... You're either going to hone in on a detail that sounds new to you, yeah. or you're going to be like, "Oh, well, I don't know that option. That's what I'm looking for." Right. And then you, then you'll slow it down, go back, rewatch it, and stuff like and, that. And what are the odds that the table of contents is worth a damn? Uh, generally Ugh. speaking, quite bad. Generally Only if speaking. you speak the exact language in the exact way that the person who wrote yeah. it is doing. And even then, uh, I kind of have this rule of thumb of like what I get excited for in a DVD. If I'm I say DVD, in an instructional, I don't have a physical copy of any of this stuff, uh, is if you're looking at it and it'll be like, hip bump from guard, one minute, 30 seconds. Arm bar from guard, one minute, 30 seconds. A point about the guard, 15 minutes, 29 seconds. There's probably something really good hidden in that chunk. Yeah. Like, 
a point about the guard doesn't sound important, but this is where, like, your guy's going to get off on a tangent about the importance of having a certain grip. Yeah. Or, like, he'll show some drill or he'll have some story about the time he got punched doing a triangle the wrong way or something. And usually that's where the, the gold nuggets are hidden. For sure. So. Yeah, yeah. It, um, it's kind of, that's kind of the reason, and, and this is off the subject, but on the subject. Right. Uh, it's tangentially related. Like, yeah. I, I prefer audio books over regular books. Okay. And um, part of the reason is that I can listen to them in the car. It's a lot more. Uh, right. It's it's easier for me to learn. I feel like I, I personally learn better that way. Sure. And then if I if I really like the book, then I, after I listening to it on audio, I'll go back and buy it. But that's right. neither here nor there. The the point is like a lot of times the author of the book is the one reading it to yeah. you. And like in between the chapters or even in between paragraphs, they'll they'll like go off on a tangent. They'll be they'll right. read it to you and then be like. Yeah, this is what I meant by that. And then, like, right. all of a sudden, you have, like, twice as much book yes. as what was there yeah. and, and more information. And you know how everything's supposed to be pronounced? Mm -hmm. And there's there's oftentimes a lot of that kind of stuff. So yeah. I get it, yeah. So. Um, yeah, so, like, you know, the question in, in general was just, like, what's good content to take in? Right. Off And, and when we're obviously right now we're talking about instructionals, video instructionals. Yeah. Um, which I think is always good. And, and I'll make this point. Look, if you're looking at anything that's jujitsu related, when right. you're not on the mats, in my opinion, you are far more likely to get skilled at jujitsu yeah. than if you are not doing that. Right. If you're going to your class, spending an hour, two hours, whatever, then leaving and then not thinking about it again until the next time you go to class, you're probably, I don't want to say you're not going to get good. It's just going to be a much longer journey. Right. Um, you're not forcing yourself to retain the information. You're, you're probably the person who's like, man, I never remember the names of the moves. You, you know, whereas, and that, that may not always be the case, but that's often the case. Yeah. It's like, well, how many times did you think about that since the last time you were here? Right. Oh, zero times. Well, that's probably like, part of uh, it, right? Like, you know, if you if you go home, go to your math class and then you don't practice any of it and then you go back to math class, you're going to wonder why you're getting a C on the test instead of an A. Right. Because you only have average retention. If you're that guy who's pushing your shopping cart at Giant Eagle or whatever, and you're like, baseball bat choke grip, normal grip, baseball bat. That's, that doesn't mean you're going to get good at baseball bat chokes, but at least you're definitely not going to forget you wanted to work on that when you yeah. get back to class. And, and I would argue that you'll be better at it than the guy who learned it and then never practiced it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You, at least you'll know that that's the grip you need. Right. Like, at the very least, you'll be like on knee, on mount, knee mount or, or, or you know, if you, if you like to have them pass that way, you know, like you'll right. be like, boom, I can choke them from this. Yeah. You know, um, yeah, that, that's, that's important, but there's other kinds of content too, right? I think there's content that's directly related, obviously the, the instructional videos. Right. I think other content that is tangentially related would be content on mindsets. Okay. Like, like, uh, and some people like it, it kind of falls into the self-help category a little sure. bit, but, yeah. uh, you know, I, and that, that gets whatever rep it gets. But right. um, I think self-help books, for the most part, are good. It's, it's people just, especially if you read it anecdotally. Yeah. I think that's how you have to take any self-help book is like, this is what worked for a person. Right. Perhaps it'll work for you. You know, and, and usually lucky they... lucky if you had identical brain chemistry, right? Yes, that would be amazing. But, yeah. uh, you know, my, my point is like what works for David Goggins doesn't necessarily work for you. So... You know, that's not necessarily the answer, but it's like, well, what is the point he's trying to make? You know, the right. point he's trying to make is that things are hard and putting yourself into hard situations is the way to get better. Right. Right. Like, that's really all he's trying to say. He, in, if you read his book, he specifically says on many times, look, I went and ran a marathon without training for a marathon. Do not do that. You will mess yourself up. Yeah. Like, he, he doesn't recommend it. He doesn't recommend losing whatever it was, 250 pounds in, in right. uh, two months or whatever he did. Yeah. You know, and, and uh, but I think those books on mindset are very important, too, because jujitsu is hard, you, you know, and, and especially if you're the kind of person like you, you never struck me as a person in all our training that has a lot of ego and, and put a lot of stock in like uh, you have to win every time. Like yeah. you, you're you were much more cerebral than that, I felt. Right. Um, you, you like, it seems to me and tell me if I'm wrong, that you really enjoy the puzzle solving element of it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, like it's always kind of been that way for you. It's like, Ooh, Pretty much. plus you like, and you like being physical, but like, yeah. you, you weren't like upset if you lost, but like right. there, there are people who get upset when they lose, like in, in the Academy. And it's like, well, that is where you're supposed to lose. Yeah. Like what, what were you hoping is going to happen? Cause if you show up and win every day, you're overqualified, right? <laughs> yeah. Like it's that you're spending a lot of money just to 
Like, you could find a bunch of 10-year-olds to fight. It's easy. I do it all the time. Ask to help out with some kids' classes. It'll, you'll win them all. Right? <laughs> That'll save your ego right away. You'll be fine. Your balloon sweep will get amazing, right? Yeah. That's a little pro tip if you ever want to get good at balloon sweep. Befriend a bunch of children, and it's, it's Tomonaga. It's just taking them over your head, making sure they forward roll. Yeah, it's a good way to teach them a forward rule too. Yeah. Um, so, so there's that kind of the content, and, right. and whether it be, I li- again, I like audio books because I can listen to them in the car, but right. um, also like just books. And I think, I mean, I don't know, I, I think I don't think I'm alone in thinking that probably the best jujitsu book ever written, modern jujitsu book ever written. Okay. It's probably Saulo Ribeiro's Jujitsu University. Yeah. Um, I also think that uh, Robert Drysdale's opening to close guard is extremely good if you if you want to be real geeky and get into the history of jujitsu. It's got different goals, but yeah, yeah, it's not gonna it's not gonna show you a new technique, but it will have you yeah. you will get to argue with some people about some random lineage stuff. So that's cool. yeah. <laughs> well, and, and like I bring that one up specifically because like to me, again, I'm I'm assuming if you're watching this video, you you like jujitsu, you're, right. you're into the geek, more geeky elements because we're not showing you moves here, right? Like yeah. we're just talking about it. We're just two guys talking, and like you're probably interested in the history of jujitsu and, and, and that kind of thing. And um, the history of jujitsu is more, more nuanced than, than kind of right. like the mainstream idea. It doesn't make, I don't know. I think it's simple. You know, like the example would be like Kendall's lineage is Bill Jones, Tony Rinaldi, Pedro Sauer, right. you, you know, uh, Hicks and Gracie, Alio Gracie. Although again, there's like right. a nuance there, How's right? That because, work? because Alio promoted him. To eight. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. You know, and, and then you've got, uh, you know, Carlos Gracie Sr., and then you've got, uh, you know, uh, you probably, know, Jacinto, Gracie? probably like, Jacinto Ferro. Right. You know, and then Mitsuyo Miedo. Right. Um, and that's the way the, the, the evidence seems to be. Right. But it wouldn't be much different from, like, maybe a kid who started, imagine a kid who starts here at nine. Right. He's probably trained with you, with Tommy, with yeah. Dustin, with Ed, with me. You know, there's like five instructors. And right. like on his certificate, it's going to be signed by me. Right. You know, let's say he makes it to black belt. It's going to be signed by me. And it would be real easy in 20 years for him to be like, yeah, Bill Jones was my instructor. Yeah. And not even thinking about it because that's what's on his certificate. Right. But like if you get into the minutia, it's like, well, I, I technically I learned this from Kendall and I learned this from, you know, like. Right. You know, and, and that's kind of how that goes, I think. And, and I don't know why people get all bent out of shape by it, but I get a little off track, I guess, but. I, I think some of that probably comes from the fact that there was a period of time where the Gracies didn't all get along with everybody, and so there was a brand new each other. there. Um, but that's that's not just them. If you look at other martial arts, it's like, oh, no, 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 no. We do Wing Sun here. Sun. They're doing Wing Chun there. That's not the real thing. We've got the real lineage. Yeah. Right? Oh, I mean, look at yeah. look at Bruce Lee's lineage. Yeah. It's all messed up. There, there's there's uh, traditional Jeet Kune Do, and then right. there's Jeet Kune Do concepts. And right. who's right? I don't know. I don't yeah. study Jeet Kune Do, but like... They argue about it for sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, but anyway, getting back on track, like like that kind of those books are really good to grab right. too. Um, um, do you have any? You mentioned the self help books and stuff like that. Do you have any that you personally recommend? You yeah, Goggins, I I really you? I really enjoyed David Goggins. Uh, I really enjoy uh, Jocko Willink. I think everything he's written is really good. Right. Um, and then then there's uh, like Seven Habits for Highly Effective People. I think that's a really right. good one. Uh, Grant Cardone has written a few really good books that, that I like. Um, and I don't remember the names of all of them. Sure. Uh, I'm not good at remembering those names. I didn't bring it, bring that into, into the conversation right. cause I, I forgot the name right. of them, but well, I mean, the, they're really add good them books. In the comments or something later. Yeah. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll add a few in there. If, if you guys are interested, do me a favor, write in the comment to rem, to remind me to put, put sure. the names of yeah. some of the books I recommend. Um, I'll put them in my newsletter that I do too. But, uh, yeah, I think I think there's a lot of really good books out there. Uh, you know, and it depends what you're looking for too. Yeah. Um, yeah. Th- there's one. Oh gosh, I can't remember the name of it. Yeah, I'm terrible. I, I usually have to refresh myself on like names of right. things I before I. Cold here, yeah. yeah, no, that's okay though, because I did bring it up. Right. <laughs> but uh, I'll I'll put it in the comments and maybe even do a podcast on that if you want. But. Um, but, you know, like, so going back to videos, though, because I do think that's what right. most people do. I just kind of wanted to point out that there's other types of content. Yeah. Like, uh, my, like, it, it, it so, like, we kind of discussed that there's different types, right? There's, like, the encyclopedic type. Right. And then there's the type that's meant to be. Instructional. If you don't do this step, this next step isn't going to work. Yes. Like, instructional. Yeah. Um, 
linear like core structure. Yeah. yeah. And I would say that like John Donaher and Gordon Ryan fall into that subject uh, pretty much. Theirs is right. very much like step A, step B, step A, step B, right. step A for, for several different positions. Oftentimes within the video, yeah. re-explaining the previous part of the video. Yeah, yeah. John Donaher especially. Yeah. Like, like with his, that's again another reason you can watch him on two times speed. Not Plus he speaks very slowly uh, right. in my, my opinion. And two times speed on him sometimes just sounds like normal speech. I mean, to his credit, though, if you bought something and someone was speaking really fast and slurring a lot, it wasn't deliberate. Yeah. You'd be upset. Yeah, you're right. You're yeah. right. I, I'm not saying that as a dig on him. I mean, yeah. uh, you know, I doubt he's watching Bill Jones on right. top-level jiu-jitsu. But, sure. you, you know, yeah. I'm not saying that as a dig on him. I think he's phenomenal at what he does. So, But, like, I really like his content. I really like Gordon Ryan's content. Uh, David Porter has a really good video out there. Uh, Pedro Sauer has a really one, good one out there. Pedro Sauer would be a good example of like a, uh, more of an encyclopedia. Like like it's it's more of like yeah. here's a bunch of moves, right? And here's the situation for this particular move, but yeah. it might not connect to the move you just saw. Right. It's like he made a list. Yeah. Right. It's versus like uh, he he made a process of A before B before C. Yeah, but. and David Porter's is the same way. His Dars. His Dars says deconstructing defense. It's it's kind of the same right. way. It's like here's a series of situations. I think I think he goes over like 87 Dars entrances. Right. So it's like it, after he shows mechanics of the Dars, so it gives you yeah. great mechanics for finishing the Dars, and then like 87 different entrances. And if you tried to like go to the mat and hit all those, no, like, good luck. You should you yeah. should look for the one that comes up in your rolling, which yeah. which is another important detail. This is why you should double check what's in the DVD or whatever. I said DVD again. The instructional before you buy it. Because it'll be like, hey, do you want these 31 ways to pass lasso guard? And it'll be like, I wear a gi twice a week. Yeah, that's a good point. What are the odds that the guy I'm rolling with is a lasso guard guy? Yeah. What are the odds that the two or three options I already like aren't there? It's. What are what are some things you look for that you would recommend? So so I think some of the challenge for people is like, yeah, they know Gordon Ryan's good. They know they know the, like they know who the big names are. Right. But sometimes their stuff's a little more expensive. Gotcha. What if they're on more of a budget and they're looking for like, I don't want to say lesser skilled people because right. the price but, doesn't necessarily. I mean, don't get me wrong. Gordon and and, and John Her, they're very 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 skilled yeah. people. But what I'm saying is like just because Junio Casio's is, right. is thirty dollars and and you know Craig Jones is eighty right. doesn't make Junies worse. No. What, what would you look for to find, like, hey, whose videos should I watch and who should I, maybe not by, by name, but, like, who should I wait what, what is it in the, in the video that should, should maybe key me in that what I'm watching is bullshit? Oh, okay, so specifically red flags. Yeah, red, that's what I'm looking for, red flags. What are okay. red flags you would look for? Um, if the video's on too specific of a topic, right, because that either means that, like, Maybe there's a slightly more generalized version of this topic that would give me a more holistic idea of what's going on. And I, I want to be clear. I don't mean like it's about just Kimura's. Ah, that's pretty specific. I mean like this is my new guard that I invented that's, uh, I don't know, double canary guard. And I've named it and it only works when these 13 elements are in play. And by the way, I am six foot seven, 145 pounds. So make sure you play with my body type, right? That kind of stuff, I think, is not great. Or if if you don't double-check going into it, find out if the video is from a guy who speaks the language you speak in. I'm not even talking about, like, an accent. I'm saying sometimes it's got the subtitles, and if you are not a subtitles person, you're not going to like it. There are some instructionals I've encountered where it's, like, a guy sitting next to a guy, just like Bill and I right now, and Bill's explaining the move in Portuguese, and I'm translating it into English, and I'm not saying that can't work, but I am saying that does complicate the process. Can be bit. challenging. Um, for any instructional you're thinking of getting, I would, and this this feels a little mean. I don't want to take money out of anybody's hand, but like a lot of those fanatics instructionals are eerily similar to the same guy's YouTube page. So like, if nothing else, double check and see if you like the material that they're doing, or if you're like, I'm really excited about this one move on the instructional. Maybe find out if you even like the move enough from the YouTube version to get the paid version, right? Mm -hmm. That that's, uh, brings up another point that I want to talk about is like, there was a time like back when I started, which is like 20 years ago now, right? Um, 
that you, well, when, when I first started, YouTube didn't exist, right. but, but two years later it started. That's how old I am. Um, and like, it was like, eh, be careful what you look at on YouTube. Yeah. Some of it was, objective. you know, like, um, and for me, like things I look at may not be the things that other people look at. Yeah. You know, cause what I'm looking at when I, when I watch a move is one, does it apply to a problem I currently have? Right. Or does it apply to, does it seem like it's going to expand my ability in some way? Like, right. like it's, it's not a problem I have, but it could solve a problem that, that is coming up. Right. right. Like, like, like maybe it's not within the butterfly guard moves I use already, but like, Oh, that would be a nice secondary answer or something. Right. right? The other thing I look at is, does it follow solid mechanical principles of jujitsu? Right. You know, like, uh, an example I saw not too long ago was a wrist lock and a guy that was standing versus seated and basically the guy in front of him and the guy seated just grabs the hand and then does a, like a, a roll. Sure. And it's like, yeah, that might work, but you, my problem with it is you have to have good control. Remember jujitsu as I define it. And as I think most skilled people define it right. is control that leads to submission, right? Like right. that that's kind of like and, and and in my mind like again having grown up in a MMA gym. Right. It doesn't even have to be truly submission. Right. It could just it be, be make him quit. Control to make him quit, right? Yeah. Start hitting him in the face. That that might be the answer. If you're an officer, maybe the answer is rolling him over and cuffing him. If you're in a jiu-jitsu match, obviously the answer is right. attempt to submit. Yeah. But those submissions that don't have control elements to them tend to, one, be at a much higher risk of injuring somebody. Yeah. Because, like, once I grab your wrist and roll, I have no control over whether you decide to roll I with it or not. I wipe those spaz the other direction, then... Yeah, you just snap your wrist, yeah. right? Um, and the other thing is, like, you don't even really know if it's going to work. Yeah. You know, it's kind of... You made a great point once about neck cranks and why you yeah. don't like neck cranks. is like, well, what is the mode of injury? We really have no way of finding out without... Right. Maybe killing somebody. Maybe there's, not. <laughs> and there's some neck cranks I think absolutely will work. I think you'll definitely put that person in a wheelchair the rest of their life. Problem is, is like, is is when I'm doing a Darce kind of crooked, is that the same thing? I don't I don't know if that's wheelchair worthy or not. And like, you know, neither does my partner. So like if my if my only two self defense options are binary, it's wheelchair or nothing. That's a really bad level of control of the situation, right? If we were going to do that, I should pick up a cobblestone and hit a guy in the head with it, right? Like, my only two options are, like, kill or not kill. Then that's leaving an awful lot of most situations on the table. Yeah. And it's kind of the same with that wrist lock. It's like, yeah. you're either going to break the wrist or you're just, it's just going to completely, you're just going to end up doing a barrel roll. Right. And and neither of those really no, are, are optimal, right? Um it's kind of like that arm lock that that's uh, it's out of the it's in the Gracie Master text for that matter from the shoulder grab or, where you yeah, just come or the mirror lock one, yeah right? or people you know go to an underhook and you just whap right yeah. like you can definitely break someone's arm with that sure. no argument and yeah. you've I mean there's many of videos of it happening right the problem is Soccer it's either break their arm stuff. with it or right. don't like it, you're not getting a whole lot else out right like so it's like kind of not worth your time unless you want to win that way. And I, you know, it's funny. I said that once on a Facebook post and the guy's like, just fucking get over yourself. When you know, you win as quick as you can. And it's like, well, sure. Uh, okay. Maybe an ADCC yeah. where um, there's a check on the line, a big check and, right. and probably a lot of accolade. And pro but like, if you're at grappling industries in Cleveland, Ohio, do you need to break someone's leg? Do no. you need to break someone's arm? It's, I feel like doing those give kind them a of chance to tap. Yeah. Right. And th that's the problem is that move is either going to not give them the chance to tap Right. Or just not work. I think, uh, I think people, I think there's two different things that look the same and there's a lot of overlap, but they're not the same. There's submissions and there's attacking a person's joint. Submission, right there in the name, there's a chance to give up. I get a chance to submit. It's a mm -hmm. give up move, right? Uh, if I run up at you and stomp on your kneecap, it's kind of like a knee bar in that your kneecap explodes. That's not a submission. Yeah. Right? If I drop all my body weight on your elbow at one time, that's kind of like a submission and the rules as written in i think all of the competition formats i'm aware of that is legal they don't actually say that like uh you have to give a guy time to tap you're allowed to just rip it and rip it but is that the culture you like being a part of 
Because if you want to do that, you should also go ahead and strike because we're just injuring each other anyway, right? That's yeah. the, that's the whole point of grappling instead of striking. Is yeah, that I feel I like you're getting more into MMA. Guy. Yeah, it's starting to become Which, MMA. again, is cool. Do that also. Yeah. But, like, just, be aware. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I think that's half the problem is, like, people don't don't even realize that they're wa- what they're watching right. is maybe not what they're really looking for. Yeah. You know, like, so it's like, how do you determine that? Well, I, I would say, like, if, if I'm new... And I don't know, you know, you have over 10 years of experience doing sure. this. I have 20 years of experience doing this. You and I are pretty easily going to be able to watch a YouTube video and decide, one, is this bullshit or not? Yeah. And two, like, does it, is it even what I want to do personally? Right. And then, but if you're new, you may not have those filters built in yet because yeah. you don't have the experience to go with it. Right. So you either, my recommendation is watch people who have already have accolades Watch your right. Gordon Ryan's. Watch your John Donahers. Watch your Junio Casio. Watch, watch right. your, you know, Neil Neil uh, Melanson. Melanson. Yeah. What, you know, these guys all have uh, done a lot of stuff and have proven records. Right. And then once you've been around, and that's not to say that there's, trust me, I have found gems yeah. out there from people I've never heard of. Right. And I'm like, who is this guy? He's a great instructor and he's giving great stuff. Right. But like, it's harder to find those because you have to sort through a lot of crap farther them. down. Yeah. Uh, and you have to remember, like, if somebody's, and this is true of all things you encounter on the internet, you know, if Bill Jones and I sat down and we had to make content for a week, we could come up with some pretty cool content. And then, like, a year in, if we did it every week, you know, still some pretty cool content. And then if I'm coming out, if this is my day job and I come out with three videos a week, every week for four years, man, at some point, I either have to repeat content or... You're going to have some filler episodes. Or be like, hey, this one time I pulled this move off on the white belt. Yeah. This is cool, right? Yeah. And you got to you gotta know what that stuff looks like. That's why I don't put a bunch of moves out there. It's not because yeah. I don't know moves. It's, it's just like, I think the people who listen to this channel and listen to me are interested in what I have to say and what guys like you have to say, right. our guests. And, you know, whereas, like, the moves I put out, I don't think they're appreciably unique enough uh, and I certainly don't have the accolades of like like hey here's a move that John Donaher you know here's a move on float passing it's like well right. or you can just go to a guy who's done it multiple times in tournaments and get his content too yeah. you know and I certainly don't want to be taking money out of his mouth because I didn't do it you know yeah but anyway uh, yeah I don't know I hope this was helpful I, did we really get anywhere with it I feel like uh, just kind of look for the red flags yeah. Uh, I, I do have one more kind of video we didn't discuss yet. Yeah, okay. So we talked about like an encyclopedia that you can use as a reference material, and those are really nice, but usually that's better when you already kind of understand the game you're playing. I would not buy a Spider Guard encyclopedia to learn Spider Guard, right? Uh, and we talked about like a beginning to end, this is the process I want you to go through kind of video. I think there's a third section, which is like actual competition or maybe even just live rolling footage. Because uh, I've only had, like, super, I've seen it, and now it's downloaded into my DNA epiphany moments a handful of times in jujitsu where I'm like, I don't need to drill that. I'm immediately going to hit that tonight. Mm-hmm. Uh, and all of those have always been rolling footage. I have never gotten that from a tutorial, right? Because sometimes, like, a person actually doing a thing just clicks, right? Uh, yeah, that's actually a great point. So. And, and, I mean, like, I would say every professional sport, yeah, every one of them, bar none, will take you back after your games or, or you know, in prep for games or if right. you're a swimmer you'll you'll watch video examining your form you'll watch the you know you would, there's probably a million breakdowns of Michael Phelps moving through the water right. and how he moves and uh, you, you know you're going to watch video ad nauseum and you're going to know what the enemy or what the enemy what what the the opponents are going to do you're going to know their tendencies you're going to know right. how to beat those tendencies and and on top of that, afterwards, you're going to watch what you did, and you're going to say, oh, here's how I could have reacted better or differently. Or Oh, is that what that looks like when I do that? That's yeah. not what I thought that and, looked like when I do that. Yeah, and so if you do that, there, there's a great YouTube channel called Less Impressed, More Involved. Uh, go subscribe to them. And it, they do just that. He, he right. breaks down these videos. He even created an awesome database for all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, I'm subscribed to it. It's amazing. Um, where you can go in and be like, okay, uh, it's all nogi, but uh, you can be like, okay, uh, darsh choke. And, right. and you can find literally every darsh choke hit an ADCC in the last, like, several years. And video, and then, like, click on it, and it'll here's a video of it happening. Here's a video of it happening. Here's a video of it happening. And, like, it, it's pretty amazing um, to be able to just kind of go back and watch yeah. that. Because sometimes there's things that 
some guys don't even realize they're doing. Yeah. You, you know, you don't Frequently even, it's like that. Yeah, it's like, or maybe it was just a freak defense that he had to beat first and then goes to the darks. Yeah. You know, like, so it's yeah. great, great content. I remember years ago I saw someone, um, not sure who it was, sorry, uh, but breaking down, like, the Joe Rogan throwing a sidekick video and Joe Rogan's teaching it. He's like, ah, oh, now watch this. Joe Rogan's got to tell you to do this thing. And then when he does it live, he doesn't do it. Uh, that's probably because somebody told Joe Rogan something at some point, do it like this, and then he internalized doing it the correct way. And, like, sometimes I'll be teaching people stuff, and I'll tell them an exaggerated thing I don't think that they can do. Maybe it's physically impossible to do, but I figured out that's the right cue to get them to do what I want. And that can be very confusing if you're watching videos and you don't know what you're supposed to actually look like when it's done, yeah. right? All right, so hopefully, guys, this was helpful to you. We're at like 30 minutes, so we should probably stop rambling. Yeah. But, uh, guys, thanks for watching. Appreciate it again. Like, subscribe, comment, all that stuff. Let us know what content do you like. I'm really interested in that. Like, if you have good ideas and, and other good content, uh, please put it below in the comments. It always helps. We'll talk to you later.